Have you ever been tired? Of course you have. That's a pretty universal human experience. Now we know that there are different kinds of tired. There's a good kind of tired. The kind of tired we feel after a long but productive day doing something we love. However, there's also a kind of tired that is different. This is a kind of tiredness of the spirit or a, a weariness of the soul. This soul weariness can be caused by many things, a number of which we're talking about in this series. Worry, busyness, conflict, etc. These can all feel soul crushing in various ways. However, in a sense, these are all external soul crushers. They come from people or situations that happen outside of us. But sometimes the soul crushing comes from within, from our own heart. Sometimes we get trapped in negative thoughts and emotions and it, it seems like there's no way out. This is especially true of feelings of guilt and shame. In Psalm 23, 3, there are four words we want to focus on this week. He restores my soul. To restore something means to return it back to the previous condition. You might think of your electronic devices, and most of them nowadays have a feature that will restore them to factory defaults. So if you have ever had to use that feature, it pretty much wipes the slate clean of all the settings and everything you've done to change it. Now let's talk about the soul. What is the soul? Some people deny that it exists and say that all we are are clumps of molecules and cells. The Bible affirms, however, that the soul exists. It is that part of us that is more than tissue and muscle and bone. It is the part of us that makes us living and breathing and active. If you've ever been to a funeral with an open casket, and have seen the body of a loved one lying there, you can tell, can't you, that something is missing? The body is there, but the spirit, the soul, is not. In Genesis 2, the Bible says that God formed the man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into him the breath of life, and the man became a living soul. This first soul, Adam, was made in the image of God. And after God had joined this soul with his mate, Eve, the Bible says they were naked and felt no shame. In other words, these two human souls had no guilt and no shame, nothing to hide from God or from each other. Then Genesis chapter 3 comes along. After the man and the woman both betray God, they immediately sense a feeling of guilt and shame arise within themselves. They feel the need to cover and hide from God and from each other. Sin leads to shame, and shame is corrosive to relationships, causing us to pull away and hide from others, to cover up and lie to one another. When God shows up later in the chapter, something interesting happens. He does not strike them down. They do face consequences for their actions, but they also find grace. Genesis 2, 21 says, And the Lord God made for Adam and his wife garments of skin and clothed them. You see, God covered over their sin and shame and set a precedent that becomes crucial for all of us. An animal died and its blood was shed to cover over the sin and shame of Adam and Eve. Throughout the Hebrew Scriptures, a sacrifice was required to cover over the sin and shame of the people of Israel. However, these sacrifices were merely a foreshadowing of the real sacrifice to come, Jesus Christ, the very Son of God. His blood was shed on the cross for all sin and all shame, and His death does not just cover over sin, it removes it. Psalm 103, verses 11 through 12. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, 
so far does he remove our transgressions from us. As a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. When the Lord restores your soul, he does not leave you to wallow in guilt and shame. Yes, he does correct and he does convict us when we're walking outside of his will, but he has no desire to continue pressing on us once we've turned back to him. God does not hold your sin against you. He loves you and wants to restore you by leading you out of the shadow of guilt so you can walk with him in love and peace. Thank you.